opportunities as a member of Wesleyan Service Guild, one of the United Methodist, uh, United Methodist Women Predecessor Groups. She sensed that this is a place she could serve missions. This began 45 years of participation in the United Methodist Mission support roles. United Methodist Women of the Kansas East Conference is where she works as administrative assistant today, and she serves now as the conference staff liaison to the conference elect leader team and the Cooperative School of Christian Mission. Married to Ted, Ted Edman, retired United Methodist pastor, she is the mother of two sons and Grandma KK to four grandchildren plus one expected to arrive in late March. She serves on the Topeka Highland Park uh, United, Methodist, or United Methodist Church Worship Planning Committee team, designs and prepares worship altars, sings in the church choir, and facilitates an adult Sunday school class. Let's welcome Katie Edmund. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to be invited to come to churches. Um, my husband was here not too many weeks ago, and uh, so don't hold me against him. If you <laughs> I am very thrilled, too, to have um, a pastor like Pastor Jay who is willing to celebrate missions of the United Methodist Church. They're actually the pastors who are threatened by United Methodist women, and I don't understand that, but then what can I say? You know? I've been trying to change that concept for 45 years. I'm not getting very far. Bear with me, please. I came down from cold this weekend, so I come with Kleenex, uh, Tussin, some uh, throat spray, uh, um, nasal saline solution, everything, to try to get me so I can be up here. So hopefully I can carry on with this and, and not be too much of a distraction. Behold, God makes all things new. And we, as God's children, are grafted, grafted to Christ. That means we're interwoven with Christ. And we are part of an amazing thing that God is doing all the time. We stand on the edge of eternity. Do you see the view? Can you imagine what God has planned? We are in a position to watch God make things new, and yes, even makes me new every morning. Sometimes every moment of every day, which means I'm constantly changing. Changing is not one of my favorite things. It calls me to be stretched and move directions that I don't really want to go sometimes. Thrown into situations where I think, oh, I can't do that. But with God, all things are possible. So this morning I want to share just a little bit with you about what it means for United Methodist women to be standing on the edge of eternity, but also I think what it means for all Christians. 135 years or more ago, the United Methodist women and predecessor organizations began a ministry. It started in India to women and children who were dying for lack of health care and lack of education. And some women got together and they sold pies, of all things. So we laugh and we think, oh, there's the UMW potluck, you know. But they started out with pies, and the money for those pies were given to this mission, to send missionaries to India. Who would think what a little coin could do? Now, one of the things I like to do, actually, is to pick up coins that I find on the ground and turn them into my thank offering for United Methodist Women. And it's amazing the places that I have found coins. My children have grown up watching me do this, and one day we sat at the corner of uh, or a stoplight at um, Highway 96 bypass in Pittsburgh, Kansas, and Sixth uh, Street, Fourth Street. That's Fourth Street, I think. It's been a while. It's been a while. Anyway, I'm sitting there at the stoplight with my Andrew in the car with me, and I spot a penny out on the ground. I didn't say a word, I just thought, how can I get that penny? My aunt returned me and said, no, I am not getting out of the car to pick up that penny. 
So, there you go. <laughs> well, at least it made some kind of impression. Um, so this is how the organization has started and what a joy it can be to serve others. United Methodist Women works with the Durham Board of Global Ministries. And that has changed my world view. At one time, I wish I had a current statistic. I went on the internet to try to find one. But at one time, United Methodist Women globally gave over 33% of all funds to any mission program in the United Methodist Church. And that's quite a sizable sum of, of uh, resourcing that God can take and use. And the other beautiful part about that for me is that the funding goes in. Like this year, UMW has set its budget for 2012. And that budget for 2012 is based upon funds that were gathered in 2010. So in other words, money is not spent until it's held on hand, ready to be deployed. And that's the same thing with our United Methodist Church. When we have these disasters, we give to disasters. That money is replacing what has already gone to those locations. And I find that an exciting piece of it. Well, I got a little bit away from standing on the edge of eternity, except to say that um, many years ago, a dear United Methodist woman friend taught me that children are God-given gifts. Now, if you're a parent, or you've been a parent, or a grandparent, or you've been someone sitting in a restaurant when there's a child there, like mine used to go around and tell everybody what was good to eat on the menu. And his brother would sit there and say, Mom, make him sit down, make him come here, you know. Don't let him do that. And I would just say, son, pretend like you've never seen him before. <laughs> now, the interesting thing about that child was, when everybody left the restaurant, they had to stop by his table and say goodbye which just amazed me. So watching children is really an interesting thing. And usually when they're making noise or doing something like that, they're saying, I would like some attention. I need some help. This is important to me, and I am important to you. So I try to respond. Well, four critical dynamics that children have taught me about facing the future, as I have experienced this, are kind of interesting. Dynamic number one. The three-year-old children's group at a daycare center prepared for an Easter egg hunt. With help from the daycare workers, each child took a one-gallon jug of, uh, from a milk carton, cutting it just so ears sprang up on top. Using permanent markers, a simple rabbit face was drawn on right above where the pipe cleaner whiskers were glued on. Blew that cotton ball to the back, and a tail emerged. Very magical indeed. With already formed handle, right from the milk jug, one nifty egg carrier was made. With three different egg, type, egg types hidden, the children then were encouraged to seek and find all the eggs that they could and put it into their uh, bunny carrier. Mommy. This certain young boy found one hard boiled colored egg, placed it into the Easter grass, which lined his container. Then he found and picked up one candy egg and put it next to the first egg. Thirdly, he found a blue plastic egg filled with jelly beans, and this made three eggs in his container. He sat down next to the swing set on a railroad tie. The worker noticed that he was not hunting eggs, and she approached him and encouraged him to hurry and find more eggs. With sincere, grateful eyes, the young child looked at the worker over very thick glasses and said politely, No, thank you. I have all I need. Lesson learned. With God and God's promises in Christ, we have all we need to face eternity. God says, as the scripture pointed out today, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I am all you need. Now, to parallel that, I'd like to share with you that founded in 1904, a mission outreach called Wesley House Community Center in Meridian, Mississippi, combined six separate but cooperative agencies to address needs of hurting people. This uplifting healing ministry includes education, health care, community agencies, victim services, and Christian relief. For children, women, and youth who do not have enough, Resources are available to provide some of those needs, to encourage hope, to strengthen the skills necessary to face life. If a child discloses, for instance, to abuse uh, to a Wesley Victim Services Agency a person, 
that child is taken immediately to a beautifully furnished, child-friendly environment staffed by expert uh, nurse examiners called the SANE room, S-A-N-E, I thought that was kind of fun. It stands for Sexual Assault Nurse Examiner. They're examined tenderly and carefully, and then the condition is assessed. Then needs are addressed as the child needs them. Enough is redefined to include positive possibilities for this child that the child might not have had made possible through United Methodist Missions. Daddy. Dynamic number two. Out of the way, here comes that child again. It's a new morning, and he's zippity clicking down the hallway in the kitchen. Yeah. Morning one more day, pushes the chair closer to better climb onto the kitchen counter. No Why the enthusiasm? Breakfast. I've never known a two-year-old to approach food with such total weight. He opened the drawer, picked up a spoon, looking at the spoon, holding it high, said, Hi, spoon, and placed it on the kitchen table. Next, he opened the cabinet door, picked up a bowl, and greeted it with, Hi, bowl, and put it on the table next to the spoon. Then, a box of Cheerios. Yes, Cheerios. And yes, you guessed it. Hi, Cheerios. Then last, you heard the high milk, and the milk was all placed next to everything else. The feast was ready. The excitement was, was expressed, but with very purposeful action. The eyes sparkled. The movement was swift and sure. The act was simple. The impact was amazing. Enthusiasm about everything in that small meal. The lesson? Enthusiasm for the simply ordinary is very powerful. Bell County, Kentucky is the 20th poorest county in the United States. Henderson Settlement, some of you may have heard of this, is the primary social service agency in the area, serving a population of approximately 7,000. Hear this testimony from Veronica Hatmaker, a participant in Henderson's Maternal Infant Health Outreach Worker Program. And I quote, I have two small children, a five-year-old daughter and a son, age two. When my daughter was only a few months old, I joined the Henderson Settlements Outreach Worker Program. I usually visit the settlement once a month to get diapers, wipes, and other baby things. It means a lot to have a helping hand these days. I don't think the outreach workers realize just how much they help others and how greatly appreciated they are. There you have it. Even in the simple, small things of life, we can have enthusiasm and provide needs. Dynamic number three. Picture this somewhat common scene. The family sat at the kitchen table eating one more meal together. As they shared and ate, the mother reached toward the table middle for margarine. Unexpectedly, as she tipped, I mean, as she brought the margarine back toward her plate, she tipped over her water glass. She pushed quickly away from the table, Plate, table, and lap were suddenly soaked. In the high chair next to her sat a three-year-old toddler. He reached toward her, patted her arm gently, and announced, It's okay, Mommy. God made you drip dry. <laughs> what a great thing. I've often thought it would be if God could work a little kind of press. But um, most of all, the lesson that I learned is not to try, to, try not to sweat this monster. Try not to sweat this monster. After all, water evaporates. Our perspective with God is critical. God is in charge of the big picture, and we are asked to encourage those next to us in small ways. We don't have to solve all the problems of the world, but we have resources that we can share with those next to us. Ngoi Wong Ngoi Ifrasi, 17, laughs as she works in the field as part of a youth training program funded by United Methodist Women. The project is located in Camina, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, and mixes academic education and agricultural training. Hear this prayer inspired by such a project as this. O oh God, whose Son blessed the whole children. Many children are too busy to come to you to be blessed. They are kept at looms and fields, sex shops and export processing zones, making money to support families. As you open our ears that we might hear the harsh realities of children in many places, inspire us to build a world where all children will be fed, be educated, and grow in peace and love. 
Amen. So let's not take the small things, the needs of our community, the needs of people within our congregation. The scripture is very clear that we are to support each other in the body of faith. And with those resources, reach out to others. So that is the privilege that we have. And last but not least, dynamic number four. While riding into town with a teenager, he asked expectantly, Mom, have you been asked if a glass is half full or empty, half empty? Well, that question did not even fit the current discussion topic, and it was rather startling that he would bring it up at that particular time. But the parent remembered that the question was used many times as an example of the difference between the optimist. They see the glass is half full. The pessimist would see the glass is half empty. Explaining that to the, the son, the son responded, well, I've been thinking about it a lot, and I think the answer is a question. A question? That captures the imagination. How could the answer be a question? Well, what would the question be, the mom asked. Were you drinking from the glass or filling it? That was his answer. Now, I don't know about you, but I hadn't encountered that quite that statement before. But it's a matter of perspective. As we look at what God asks us to view with new insight, to perceive with new thinking, even what we believe that we have looked at before and we're certain it's this way, it may not be true when all the facts are shared. It may not be that person's life until you find out more about who they are. So God asks us to view with new sight, perceive with new thinking, even what we believe to be certain, but at the same time behold a new act of creation. Am I taking only for myself? Am I pouring out resources for others? Or am I seeking a balance for everyone? I tend to think the balance for everyone is a combination of taking and giving, sharing among ourselves. So, the um, United Methodist Women works for stability and balance over time. Currently, we pledge un 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 oh, excuse me. undesignated funds and designated giving by supporting 100 national mission institutions and ministries in more than 100 countries worldwide. Con countries such as Mongolia, Indonesia, Afghan, South Africa, Mexico, Brazil, Poland, France, just a few. United Methodist women also provide housing for retired missionaries who have no place else to live, own the property, and give them a place to live. And they continue their ministry from those places. The 2012 budget approved by United Methodist women is an operating budget of $18.02 million. My, how we've grown from those pies and those coins in the very beginning. So let me just outline once more these dynamics. We have all we need in Christ. We can be enthusiastic about the future because we have a future with hope. We can treat the small stuff as small stuff, not as major crises because God's in charge of the big picture and the major crises. And we can view with new God-given vision and insight. One of my deep loves has inspired me in the past, and that's United Methodist Women. And I believe it inspires me for the future. We today in the church and as United Methodist Women join a grand heritage to stand in the midst of homeless, face disease situations, bring education to uneducated, challenge racial injustice, meet people where they are, and give the message of freedom through Jesus Christ. It is time for me to remember words I recently encountered. And it's a quote from H. Caldwell Kirby John a Windsor Village United Methodist Church, Houston, Texas, and it reads this way. Believe that the best day for the church is ahead of us, and live accordingly. Please join me in prayer.